Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So obviously you know before the coronavirus pandemic you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know was obviously you know going to be backed like you know Manchester United did confirm. Now obviously you know Solskjaer has recently insisted that he will exploit the transfer market, you know, like I recently um, updated you on, reflecting on, you know, the financial position at Manchester United, because obviously, you know, due to this coronavirus pandemic, you know, a lot of teams are under financial pressure, and teams, you know, could lose millions in transfer revenue, so Solskjaer does believe that we'll get, you know, the players that we want to recommend in, in the summer transfer window, Obviously, as you all know, our transfer budget for the summer has been revealed. You know, we're going to be given around £150 million to spend in the summer transfer market. Obviously, you know, the transfer budget will increase if Manchester United can sell players in the summer transfer window. Now, Solskjaer, of course, has identified the areas where he wants to strengthen up. You know, he wants to recommend the centre forward in. He wants to recommend the right winner in and he also wants to recommend a midfielder in and I think you know he wants to recommend the centre half in. So yeah, it's good that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is making plans for the summer, but he's going to get the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also going to get the backing of the Glazers. Now, Solskjaer is chasing four priority targets. Now, our four priority targets are Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund, Jack Grealish from Aston Villa, Jude Bellingham from Birmingham and James Madison from Leicester. Now, they're going to cost us in total of around £290 million are them four players. Now, Jaden Sancho is going to cost Manchester United around £100 or £120 million. Jack Grealish will cost us in the £60 odd or £70 odd million pound range. Jude Bellingham will cost us around £30 million pounds, and James Madison will cost us around £80 million. Pounds. So yeah, that does add up to around £290 million pounds in that. But so far, you know, Solskjaer has enjoyed three transfer windows at Manchester United and he's recommended five players in and spent around £220 million. Pounds. Now, last summer, you know, he brought Daniel James in for £15 million. Pounds. He was Solskjaer's first signing. He brought Anwan Bissaka in for around £45 million. He was Solskjaer's second signing. He brought Harry Maguire in for £80 million. The second most expensive signing at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world. He was the third signing he brought in. And in January, he brought Bruno Fernandes in for £68 million with add-ons included. He was the fourth signing. And of course, he brought Odina Gallo in on loan. But it's looking likely Odi Nagalo is going to be our fifth permanent signing because I think we're going to get Odi Nagalo on a permanent transfer and it's going to cost us around £15 million. Pounds. So there are the signings he's recommended in so far and I've got a credit in for that. So Solskjaer is looking to bring around three or four signings in the summer because that's how many signings he believes that we need to become title contenders next season. Now, the news on Jaden Sancho, like he updated you on my recent video that I did earlier on today, is that Manchester United now could miss out on Jaden Sancho. And this was stemming from the Times earlier on today. They've said that Jaden Sancho now reportedly does not want to make a move to Manchester United. Now, the main explanation for this is, is because his preference is to make a move to La Liga to either join Real Madrid or Barcelona because it increases his chances of winning the Ballon d'Or. So you actually know Sancho could go to Real Madrid or Barcelona. Don't forget also to Chelsea and Liverpool have expressed their interest in Sancho, but a lot of clubs have been in for him. Obviously, you know, we've been emerged as the favourites to sign Jadon Sancho. Um, obviously, you know, as far as I know, we're the only club that are willing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price because Borussia Dortmund have quoted out that they want at least £100 million for him. Even with this coronavirus pandemic, it's not convincing Borussia Dortmund to, let, to drop their valuation and let him go on the cheap. Borussia Dortmund do remain ruthless over their valuation. And I think Jadon Sancho said the other week, He's keen on making a move to Manchester United. Now, Sancho's been urged, you know, to turn down the transfer to Man United and remain loyal to Borussia Dortmund for at least the next couple of years. This was actually, you know, coming from Marco Royce. <laughs> but I think even if Sancho, you know, doesn't come to Man United, I think, you know, he will leave Borussia Dortmund at the end of the season. 
because Sky in Germany, you know, did confirm this back in February. Now, Man United, you know, are willing to offer him around £400,000 a week, so that will make him the highest player player with the club, and we've been working on these contracts, and we've been in negotiations with Jadon Sancho's agent for around two months now. We've been in negotiations with his agent, and that stemmed from Fabrizio Romano a couple of weeks ago, and Fabrizio Romano tends to be a very reliable Italian journalist, but this is what he said, and Duncan Castles back in February said that Man United have emerged as the favourites to sign Jadon Sancho. Now, of course, Borussia Dortmund have come to accept the fact that he does want to leave because uh, Sancho has made this admission. Uh, Borussia Dortmund have got Ferran Torres from Valencia on their agenda to replace Sancho. They've also, you know, got Jude Bellingham on their agenda. But Borussia Dortmund are going to make a huge profit on the player. Because Borussia Dortmund only paid around seven or eight million pounds from Man City. Sancho did enjoy a good a, a couple of years with Man City, but he never got assured any first team opportunities. And this is the main explanation why I left Manchester City to join Borussia Dortmund. Sancho still got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until two thousand and twenty two. Now, I think the beneficial thing, if Man United were to recommend him, is that you know Sancho's got a good friendship with Rashford, as you all know. You know, he also is proven in the Premier League. And Rashford did reveal that he wants Jadon Sancho at Manchester United next season. Um, it did say, you know, if we're to fail to if we are to fail to qualify for the Champions League, then Sancho will reject a move to Manchester United because Champions League football for us is very imperative, you know, for us to get the players we want and for us to convince the players that we want to stay and also to, you know, if we get qualification for the Champions League, we'll generate more money. Now, it did say we're willing to offer Jadon Sancho the iconic number seven. Obviously, you know, our number seven is vacant and we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations, as you all know. Uh, the Irish Independent there came out last week and said it's unofficially confirmed that Jadon Sancho will complete a transfer to Man United in the summer. But, you know, it may not happen now, but if we do get him, I think he'll be our first signing in the summer transfer window and our sixth signing overall under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. But like I did mention to you, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does need at least a couple of more transfer windows to rebuild a good squad. Because obviously, you know, it takes some managers time, you know, to get things right. Prime example, Klopp didn't settle in straight away at Liverpool. Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years when he came to Man United. So I think Solskjaer does deserve at least another season at the club. And analysing the vast majority of these players, they are not Solskjaer. There's only five players out of his that he has recommended in. But I just want us to get Jadon Sancho in the summer because, you know, he will dramatically improve us. He is predominantly a right winner as well, don't forget. And he is only at the age of 20, is Sancho. He's only the age of 20. He's now into his third season with Borussia Dortmund. Um, I think since his arrival at Borussia Dortmund, I've got to be honest with you, he has been a revelation. But um, whether we pay 100 or £120 million, like I mentioned, it's going to make him our most expensive signing, you know, and it's going to make him a record signing in the Premier League. And we've been over overpaying for players in recent years and... I think our list, uh, the list of our most expensive signings are Pogba is obviously our most expensive signing at the moment, moment who we paid £89 million pounds for. Um, Harry Maguire is our second most expensive signing, £80 million. Uh, I think Bruno Fernandes is our third most expensive signing, is he? You know, we paid £68 million for him. And Juan Bissaka is in that list, you know, we paid £45 million pounds for him. <laughs> Also, two Freds in that list because we paid fifty million pounds for Fred from Shakhtar Donetsk. Also, two um, I think De uh, De Maria's there as well because we paid sixty odd million pounds for him under the Louis Van Gaal era. Matic is there as well because we paid forty million pounds for Matic. So we are known for overpaying for players, definitely. But Jaden Sancho would go well alongside Martial and Rashford and that in our attacking line, I've got to be honest with you, but could make a move to Real Madrid or Barcelona. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, it's a two hundred ninety million pound transfer wish list because you know we get them four players that we want in. You know, it's going to cost us around two hundred ninety million pounds, isn't it? Isn't it? So I'll just put that into the equation. Now with Jack Grealish, um, I think there's a chance that Manchester United can sign Jack Grealish in the summer transfer window. There's a big chance we could sign him. 
obviously, you know, like I mentioned to you on my video yesterday, Charlie Nicholson, you know, he came out and believes that, you know, Jack Grealish's valuation will persistently go up. Obviously, you know, he's warned us over our transfer for Jack Grealish. So maybe he believes that he will remain loyal to Aston Villa. Obviously, you know, Andy Gray, who's a former Villa player, he came out recently. I'll reiterate what I said. And he believes, you know, that Manchester United should sign Jack Grealish in the summer and we should sell Paul Popper. Uh, Jack Grealish, like I mentioned, is going to cost us around 60, maybe 70 million pounds. That's probably providing if Villa avoid relegation. But if Villa were to get relegated, then Jack Grealish wouldn't cost as much as 60 or 70 million. Maybe you could get Jack Grealish on the cheap. But there again, Villa don't want to lose Jack Grealish. Now, obviously, you know, there was talks last week, you know, that he's moved to Man United, you know, may not happen now in the summer. Reflecting on the incident with his £80,000 Range Rover and that. Obviously, you know, reflect on the incident, you know, he come out and apologised to Jack Grealish. He also, you know, got fined £150,000 and that. But he said his move could have been in doubt. But I think Jack Grealish will leave Aston Villa in the summer. He's remained loyal to Aston Villa for, you know, several years now. You know, Grealish has been a Villa player since the age of six. He's been in their senior squad since 2014. And since then, he's become an integral part of their team as Jack Grealish here. You know, he was key for Villa to get into the Cowboy Cup final. He was also key for uh, Villa, you know, uh, getting promotion to the Premier League. And Jack Grealish is the age of 24. He's predominantly an attacking midfielder, but can occasionally play as a winner. He's got a contract with Villa until 2023. Um, and I think maybe his move to Manchester United hinges on, you know, the sale of Paul Popper. So maybe we'll only sell, sign Jack Grealish if we can sell Paul Popper. So he's another one of our number one priority targets. But we're looking for someone to partner up with Bruno Fernandes in our midfield. And this is what Solskjaer is planning to do. And the James Madison, like I mentioned, uh, Man United are also in for him. I think in a way we are seeing him as an alternative to Jack Grealish. Obviously, you know, if we don't get Jack Grealish, then we'll step up our interest in James Madison. Now, James Madison, like I mentioned, he's going to cost us the exact same or similar amount to how much it's going to cost us to get Jack Grealish now. I think there's more chance of us getting Jack Grealish than there's James Madison because I think Leicester will do everything they can to convince James Madison to remain loyal with Leicester. Now, like I mentioned, Leicester have lost quite a few of their imperative players in recent years. You know, they lost Maguire to us last summer, so we've done business with Leicester already. They lost Rahid Mahrez, Angolo, Kante and Danny Drinkwater, don't forget as well. Uh, I think they've recruited a good four to five, or is it six players in, you know, since Brendan Rodgers took over. Brendan Rodgers has been at Leicester now, is it, over a year or so. And you've got to admire him because he's done very, very well. I think Leicester are sitting, is it, second or third in the Premier League. So there's no main explanation why James Madison would want to leave at this moment in time. But if we was willing to pay £80 million, pounds, then that maybe, you know, could convince Leicester to offload him. So if we got Madison for £80 million, pounds, Leicester would have got £160 million pounds off us in total because we paid £80 million pounds for Harry Maguire. Now, I think Leicester have been in negotiations over getting Madison a new contract. Um, obviously, you know, Madison's got three years left on his current contract at the moment. But Brendan Rodgers did recently give his overarching view on Madison. And, you know, he basically insists that he's happy with Leicester. I think Madison's made like 70 appearances for Leicester in all competitions. 64 of those appearances have come in the Premier League. You know, Leicester paid £20 million to him from Norwich in the summer of 2018. He enjoyed a good couple of seasons in the Championship as well. He also had a loan spell in Scotland with Aberdeen. And, you know, James Madison began his career with Coventry. And he's predominantly an attacking midfielder. And he is only at the age of 23, is James Madison. So, yeah, he's another player on Manchester United's agenda. Uh, Jude Bellingham. Um, he's also a priority target for us, like I mentioned. Uh, quite a few clubs have expressed their interest in Jude Bellingham. Um, obviously, you know, Borussia Dortmund have been emerged as the favourites to sign Bellingham. Also, to uh, Liverpool, I think, have inquired about his availability. Chelsea have also been in for him. Um, I do expect Jude Bellingham to leave Birmingham City at the end of the season, but it remains unknown where his next club's going to be. 
obviously, you know, Jude Bellingham's in his first season in the senior squad with Birmingham, but I've got to give Bellingham a lot of credit because I think, you know, to be quite honest with you, Bellingham has been a revelation this season in the Championship and he's played persistently this season. I think he's played like 30-odd games for Birmingham this season as Jude Bellingham. Um, you know, he's expected to sign his professional contract in the summer when he does turn 17 because Bellingham is only 16 years of age at the moment, 16 years of age, so he's still inexperienced. Bellingham became the youngest player to ever represent Birmingham. He made his senior debut with the age of 16 years and 38 days, did the player. Now, obviously, you know, don't forget, quite a few weeks ago it was now, it might have been a month or so ago, Bellingham, you know, had visited our Carrington training ground, you know, to meet up with Ferguson, to have talks with him. Also, to Ed Woodward met up with his parents and stuff like that. So, that fueled speculation up. And I think Bellingham had give his verdict, you know, on his, you know, visit to the Carrington training ground. And he said, you know, it was very, very good. But Bellingham, you know, will cost us around £30 million if we've got any chances of getting him in. Don't forget, uh, quite a few weeks ago, we'd made a contract offer for him. We was willing to offer Bellingham around £100,000 a week and that to try and convince him to come to Man United. But yeah, so he's also on our agenda. So there are four players, you know, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, does want to recommend in in the summer transfer window. Um, obviously, you know, there's been other players on our agenda as well that are our main, they're not our main priority targets, but obviously, you know, there was talks of Saul Nagias the other week uh, coming in possibly. Um, I don't think we'll get Saul in the gears now. I think the main explanation why we won't get Saul in the gears is because we're not willing to meet Atletico Madrid's asking price because Atletico Madrid have come out and said they want £130 million. Pounds. We're not willing to meet that valuation. We're only willing to pay like £70 million, pounds, which is half the, half of what Atletico Madrid are demanding. So I don't think we'll get in the gears. Also, you know, there's been a few strikers on our agenda because we're in search for a striker, don't forget. Obviously, you know, there's been talks of Harry Kane possibly coming to Man United. I don't think it will happen. That I'm very, very sceptical because, for one, Tottenham, you know, said they want at least 150 million. Some reports said they want 200 million. And plus, you know, I just don't see it happening because there's much cheaper solutions than Harry Kane. You've got a Bamian now that's available for 35 million. You've got Termo Werner that'd be available for around 50 million. He'd cost three times less than Harry Kane. You've got Raul Jimenez, that, Raul Jimenez from Wolves. That would be a much cheaper solution than Harry Kane. So, yeah. So, there has been quite a few strikers on our agenda. But we definitely know, do need a striker because we are looking for an adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku and that. So, reiterate what I mentioned earlier on the video. Uh, we get Sancho, Madison, Grealish and Bellingham. They'll cost us around £290 million. So let's just put that into the equation. By the way, I think Carrington, our Carrington training ground is set to open, is it? On the 10th of April. Uh, it's set to open on the 10th of April. Obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been in regular contact with our players and our staff via the WhatsApp because obviously, you know, Premier League clubs are in lockdown due to this coronavirus crisis. And basically, you know, Solskjaer was saying quite a few days ago now, this was stemming from Sky Sports, saying that footballers are easy targets. Footballers are easy targets. And, you know, he said that the criticism of them is unfair. You know, that was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's overarching view on it. Obviously, you know, quite a few players now, you know, have, you know, had their wages cut by around 30%. And um, don't forget, you know, Man United have donated, you know, is it medication to the hospitals and that or something like that? So too of Liverpool. Obviously, don't forget, you know, we donated 30% of our wages uh, to the NHS. It was actually, you know, Harry Maguire that instructed our, you know, players to donate 30% of the wages to the NHS. Also, to you know, the Premier League have paid £20 million to the NHS and £125 million in advance payments to the EFL and the National League. I think they have done that. So that's very, very good of them. To be fair, you know, we just want to get back to normality, don't we? You know, obviously, you know, this this saga, with, you know, with this coronavirus has been going on for around five months now, hasn't it? You know, a lot of countries are obviously, you know, in lockdown with it. Um, the Premier League has been suspended since the 9th of March. So it's been suspended now for a month as the Premier League is exactly a month. 
Uh, it's suspended until April the 30th, the earliest. Um, I think it has been confirmed that the season will resume in July. Obviously, you know, it will be played behind closed doors. Um, obviously, you know, for public health reasons. And I think, you know, it will end in August. But actually, you know, the season is expected to start in August. Um, I think the new season is supposed to start on the 8th of August. Um, Premier League, all the fixtures that have been suspended, including the Premier League ones, they will be rescheduled, obviously, you know, when the season does eventually resume. It did say, though, didn't it, recently, you know, if the Premier League, if the season wasn't to resume, um, you know, the Premier League would have faced a financial penalty of £762 million. It also said that Liverpool are set to lose out on uh, TV rev revenues of around £55 million that came out the other week. But I did say the season wasn't going to resume, it was going to change, it was going to imp how it was going to be interesting to see how it was going to imp implicate, you know, the leagues in that. But, you know, the season will resume because it has been extended indefinitely. Uh, but, yeah, this is very, very serious, you know, is this coronavirus. Now, obviously, you know, uh, on my last video, I give you the news, didn't I, on Hamish Rodriguez because, you know, there has been uh, reports coming out today from the Spanish press saying, you know, that Manchester United have expressed an interest in Hamish Rodriguez from Real Madrid. Now, we have inquired, inquired about Hamis Rodriguez's availability in the past. He isn't one of our main priority targets. He's also said a few other clubs have been in for him. Wolves, uh, Juventus, Napoli, and also to Everton have been in for him. Now, obviously, you know, Carlo Ancelotti um, has worked with Hamis Rodriguez in the past uh, when he was at Real Madrid. Um, so yeah, there's been a few clubs that have been in for him, and it did actually say that there could be a swap deal involved. You know, of Hamish Rodriguez coming to Man United, and Pogba, you know, going to Real Madrid, and a few swap deals have been on the agenda because last week there was talks of Delict coming to Manchester United as part of a swap deal of you know Pogba going back to Juventus. There was talks of Alan Ramsey coming to Man United as part of a swap deal of probably going to Juventus. So there's been a few swap deals on the agenda, but swap deals are very, very rare in the modern game. Now, so would you take Hamish Rodriguez at Manchester United now? Obviously, you know, Hamish Rodriguez, he's served his two requirements at Real Madrid. He's struggled to sentiment his place in the team, hasn't he? At least for the last couple of years. Um, don't forget, you know, he he's come back to Real Madrid recently because he was on a two-year loan with Bayern Munich, and I don't think he was that good there either, was Hamis Rodriguez. Now, I think, you know, Real Madrid are looking to obviously offload him. Um, I think Real Madrid are looking to get like 30-odd million pounds for him. Real Madrid, of course, did pay around 63 million pounds for him from Monaco. Um, I don't want to cash in for him, the Real Madrid, because his current contract does expire in the summer of 2021, which is next year. Hamis Rodriguez is the age of 28, so he is highly experienced. He's never played in the Premier League. Do you think he'd succeed in the Premier League if he was to come in? Hamis Rodriguez, um, you know, his versatility is good. He can play in various midfield roles. He can play as an attacking mid, which I think is, is his predominant position, if I'm right can play as a winner, can also play as a box-to-box -box midfielder, and I think he's very, very good with his left foot. But Real Madrid are not only looking to offload Hamis Rodriguez, they're also looking to offload Gareth Bale. Um, they're also looking to get rid of Dani Ceballos on a permanent transfer, because he's on loan at Arsenal at the moment. Uh, so Real Madrid are looking, you know, to get rid of more players, definitely. Obviously, you know, last summer, I think Real Madrid recruited a good five or six players in and spent, was it, two or three hundred million pounds on them. But, yes, yeah, so looking to get offload Hamish Rodriguez. So, would you like Hamish Rodriguez to come to Manchester United? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the news on Paul Pogba is that I think he's going to be leaving Manchester United in the summer because, you know, Paul Pogba has revealed you know that he wants to leave Man United in the summer. So basically, Pogba now has got the same perception than what he had last summer because Paul Pogba did reveal last summer that he wanted to leave Manchester United to, feet, to seek for a new challenge and he publicly admitted that he wanted to leave the football club. But last summer, you know, don't forget, we wanted £180 million for Paul Pogba 
and that's actually you know double than what we paid for him from Juventus back in 2016. But the main explanation why Pogba's move to Real Madrid didn't materialise last summer is because Real Madrid were not willing to meet our valuations. So let's just put that into the equation. So his preference was a move to Real Madrid last summer. And I think now his preference is a move to Real Madrid because, you know, this is what he's revealed. But there has been talks about him making a return back to Juventus. Now, obviously, you know, the Sun there came out recently and said that Paul Popper could take a FIFA transfer regulation. He could take a FIFA transfer regulation to buy out the remainder of his contract. Now, I think that's for around £50 million. Pounds. Now, as it stands at the moment, Paul Pobb has got two years left on his contract at Man United. One year with an option of a further year. And um, probably, you know, Man United will trigger that one year extension. Well, maybe they won't. I don't know. I think we've quoted out how much we want for Pobb this summer and we want at least £100 million for the player. But he said today, you know, that his valuation has dropped. Um, we could only get around £70 million for Paul Pogba and that's £19 million less than what we paid for him. But we get rid of him, we've got to get more than what we paid for the player and that. Um, obviously, you know, Pogba's only played eight times this season for Manchester United. His, Manchester United, his appearances have been limited due to his, you know, injuries. So he's only played eight times this season for the football club. Now, obviously, you know, Mini Raliola has been talking a lot since the turn of the year. And he's been working on getting his client a transfer away from Manchester United completed. Don't forget, Ed Woodward's had negotiations with Mini Raliola over, you know, trying to resolve Paul Popper's future. Yes, they have not that. Yes, they have. But um, obviously, you know, quite a few weeks ago, you know, he did actually, you know, say that Paul Pogba was interested in staying at Man United and he was interested in extending his contracts at the football club and he believes he can form a good partnership with Bruno Fernandes. And Solskjaer reiterated that and said that Paul Pogba will remain at Man United next season. Pogba is also on like £300,000 a week at the football club. But Pogba is 27 years of age now, you know, he's still got a lot of development in him. But I can see him leaving Manchester United in the summer and that. But there's been a few players on our agenda who could replace him at the football club. Now, obviously, you know, we have seen a lot of players leave Manchester United since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. Obviously, you know, around nine players have left the football club since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. And it's good that he's got rid of a lot of the deadwood, to be fair. You know, Ashley Young left this year after he enjoyed eight and a half years at the club. He went on a permanent transfer to Winter Milan. Of course, you know, we saw Rojo go out on loan to Estudiantes. More than likely, we're going to negotiate on getting rid of Rojo on a permanent transfer. Uh, Smalling left last summer after he enjoyed nine years at Manchester United. You know, we'll negotiate on getting rid of Smalling on a permanent transfer more than likely. Also, too, Damien left last summer. You know, Fellaini left back in January 2019. He was the first player to leave Manchester United under the Solskjaer era, but Fellaini enjoyed six years at Man United. Also, too, we saw Herrera leave last summer after he enjoyed five years at Man United. We saw Lukaku go to Inter Milan last summer and we saw Sanchez go out on loan to Inter Milan. Uh, it's looking likely, by the way, San Sanchez is set to stay at Man United. Uh, because he's refusing to take a pay cut. So it's looking likely you know, Sanchez is going to come back and see out the remainder of his contract. So there's a lot of negativity on that. Uh, when Sanchez was at Man United, you know, he was on like 400 grand a week, rising up to 500 grand a week based on image rights and bonuses. So his wages were having a really bad effect on the club. But even though Sanchez is on loan at Inter Milan now, we're still paying like £300,000 of his wages. So we're still paying the vast majority of his wages, you know. But Sanchez, I think, is coming back. And of course, Dean Henderson's out on loan with Sheffield United and it's looking extremely likely that Dean Henderson will be coming back to Man United. Whether he'll become our number one goalkeeper or not, I do not know. Um, but I think Solskjaer's going to get rid of more players in the summer. Like I said, I think Phil Jones is on his way out. I think Lingard and Pereira there and other two players that are going to be moved on. I'll give you the news about Jesse Lingard earlier on this week. Um, Fossil Mensu, um, do you think he could possibly go? I think he and he extended his contract, Fossil Mensu, if I'm right. I'll need to read a bit more into that. But there's, I think there's been rumours of him leaving as well. 
you know. So we'll get rid of quite a few players in the summer transfer window, definitely in that. But um, like I said, I don't know if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has a long-term future for Manchester United. But I think, you know, he does deserve more time at the club. He's been here for 16 months at the moment and he has been here over a year. And he's been permanent Man United manager for 12 months now. But it is a transition period and Solskjaer's hopeful that we can get through this transition period and that. You know, in the last six or seven years, Manchester United have been playing catch-up. You know, in the last six or seven years, we've had different managers with different philosophies. A hell of a lot of money's been invested into the club. We've spent nearly a billion pounds on recruiting new players in. And we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. Let's just put that into the equation. Um, obviously, you know, under Moyes, you know, Moyes recruited two players in. Um, obviously, you know, Van Gaal, he recruited a hell of a lot of players in. Mourinho recruited a lot of players in, etc, etc. And that. So, yeah, a lot of money's been spent at the football club. But Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era and that. Um, like I said on my last video um, regarding Erling Haaland, I forgot to give you the news on Erling Haaland, didn't I? I'm sorry about that, I do apologise. Erling Haaland's been talking a lot. Um, he's been back in Solskjaer and he was explaining, you know, how, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer turned him into an expert finisher and obviously, you know, he's basically, you know, said, you know, what we need to do to get um, him in the future and that. Um, we should have we tried getting early in Haaland, didn't we, back in the January transfer window, but we didn't. But um, yeah, so yeah, so the two hundred ninety million pound transfer wish list that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has revealed in Manchester United. So it'd be good if we could get them four signings in the summer, but we will wait and see. So anyway, guys, drop me comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very very soon. Thanks for watching.